Greetings this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Blessings and favor be unto each and every one of you joining us this morning. We give God all of the glory, all of the honor, all of the praise. He is worthy to be praised this morning, worthy to be glorified, worthy to be edified. He's worthy to be magnified and worthy to be exalted. We say hallelujah. We give him the highest praise. He deserves to be blessed for his goodness, for his mercies, for his grace. This is a new morning. This is a new day. His mercies are renewed every morning. And we adore and strive unto God's holy and righteous name. We give him adoration. We give him exaltation. Because truly without him, we are nothing. We can say nothing. We can do nothing. We do all things through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Through room of the wind, the breath of God through the Holy Spirit. We do all things because of the grace of our Heavenly Father, because He bestowed upon us His only begotten Son, the Lamb of God, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And we give Him the glory, the honor, and the praise for a wonderful Counselor, a mighty God, an everlasting Father, a Prince of Peace. He is the atonement, the blood sacrifice, and we adore and strive unto the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because he's worthy to be praised, worthy to be glorified, worthy to be magnified. The Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one saint. And we bless him now. We adore him now. And we strive unto him now. Blessings and favor be unto each and every one of you. This morning I decree and declare in the mighty name of Jesus Christ the blessings of God upon you, the favor of God upon you. I decree and declare his anointing upon each and every one of you this morning. I decree and declare in the mighty name of Jesus the fresh fire of the Holy Ghost, fire of the Holy Spirit, the anointing that comes with fire, his glory resting upon each and every believer this morning and upon each and every one of you joining us. We live in the day and the hour where God is pouring out his anointing. He's saturating us in the oil. He's re repositioning and realigning us for his purpose and for his glory. And for that this morning, we say hallelujah. Ah. For that this morning, we say glory. For that this morning, we just give God praise for who he is and for what he's doing in our lives as he shifts us and aligns us with his will, aligns us with his purpose, aligns us with what he's ordained each and every one of our lives to. For that this morning, the Father gets the glory. For that this morning, the Father gets all the honor, all the praise, our Heavenly Father. We bless Him. I decree and declare supernatural intervention in your circumstance, in your life, in whatever you're experiencing and facing right now. I decree and declare supernatural intervention in every demonic attack coming against you in the airway now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare unity, oneness, and agreement among the brethren, among the saints now. For there is power in unity. That's what we're going to be talking about this morning's prayer. Power in unity. We're going to be coming out of Genesis 11, verses 1 through 9. Power in unity. We're going to be coming out of Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 through 9. It is important, saints, that we realize and understand that when we come in unity, when we come in agreement, there is so much power, so much authority released against the forces of the enemy, against the forces of darkness in the atmosphere and in the airway. There's so much authority given through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Why? Because the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one. And they're one within you and they're one within me. We are one in unity as a body of Christ. Coming together, believing that God can and that God will do the impossible in each and every one of our lives. And today, I'm decreeing and declaring unity. Oneness. Even as God brings the shifting in the atmosphere, as he shifts and repositions each and every one of us, and that's what shifting is about. It's about repositioning you, bringing change in your life, 
realigning you according to the will of the Father. When we pray thy kingdom come, thy will be done, there's a shifting that takes place. There's a realigning that takes place because God is positioning us as he's purposed and ordained our lives to be. And for that today, he's the one that gets the glory, the honor, and all of the praises. And I just say fresh oil, ah, fresh fire, fresh anointing be upon each and every one of you joining us this morning. We come in unity for divine, God's divine intervention. Where there's sickness in your body, and we decree and declare supernatural healings that comes through the Holy Spirit, that comes through the fire of God, that comes through his glory. So if you're sick in your body, if you're wounded in your spirit, we decree and declare shifting. We decree and declare divine healing taking place ah, upon you now. We just decree the glory of God hovering in your atmosphere. We bind Satan in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We bind every satanic attack coming against you now. Somebody just type the word unity. Somebody just decree the word oneness. Somebody just decree the word agreement. For there's power in unity, oneness, and agreement. And when we come in unity, Satan don't like it. The enemy don't like oneness. He don't like unity. He likes to shift our focus. He likes to keep us looking in other directions and doing other things. But today we want to talk about a town, a city that was tried to, a people that tried to build a city to heaven and the power and the authority that they had in unity and how God had to intervene in that process and bring a shift. But now, he tells the body of Christ to come in unity. And when we talk about unity, I'm not talking about just unity physically, but I'm talking about one in spirit. When we come in oneness in spirit, there's a greater measure of authority, kingdom authority, kingdom power, the glory of God beginning to manifest in ways we never imagined where there's unity, where there's oneness and agreement. Supernatural measures of God's power and of God's glory can begin to manifest. Demonic forces can be destroyed. Spiritual wickedness can be pulled down. Strongholds can be pulled down with this unity among the brethren, with this unity in homes, with this unity in marriage, in families, with this unity. If the enemy can keep you from agreeing, he can stop the power that the two of you have or that the three of you have. The Bible says, well, two or three, touch and agree, come in unity, touching and agreeing in my name. God says, there am I in the midst. The presence of God can come in because of the unity in spirit, because of the oneness in spirit, because of the agreement in spirit and in truth. What well, the Bible says, they that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. And you may say, well, Apostle Spates, what is unity? What, 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 is, what is unity? What does it mean to have unity? What does it mean to come in agreement, to come in unity? Unity, and I'm just going to give you a breakdown, a simple breakdown. Unity is oneness. It's agreement. That's unity. When you come in agreement with one another, coming into the same mindset, one passage of scripture says, I say, Paul said, among the brethren, I would that there be unity among the brethren, that we all speak the same thing, that we all speak the same language. That's unity. That's it. It's strength. See, unity brings about a measure of faith. When there's unity, there's power in prayer. Prayer warriors can come in unity. They can come in agreement. They can come in oneness. They can pray the same things. Where there's unity, there's the abundance of God. There's the blessings of God where there's unity. Where there's unity, you find God's grace. Where there's unity. Where there's unity, there's desire, there's hope. Where there's unity, there's strength, inner strength. There's strength to pray. There's strength to fast. Where there's unity. When there's unity, you come together and you can come against the enemy through spiritual warfare. Where there's unity. You can wield that sword and begin to bind and combat the attacks of the enemy. Where there's unity, there's divine intervention. 
where there's unity. When there's unity, miracles and signs and wonders can manifest. We have gratitude toward God where there's unity. We, we thank him for the many, many blessings for his abundance. Where there's unity, there's belief. We believe God for the impossible where there's unity. Where there's unity, we trust God and we trust in God. There's a divine power. There's a supernatural power that comes through the Holy Spirit where there's unity among the brethren. Where there's unity, there is no fear. In other words, the enemy tries to infect the believer with fear. But when unity comes, when unity begins to come forth through the brethren, what the enemy means for our bad, God shifts it for our good. We pray together when there's unity. We worship together when there's unity. When there's unity, signs, miracles, wonders, healings, and demonstrations can take place. Where there's unity, you find compassion. You find God's love where there's unity. And I'm talking about spiritual unity. We know that when you work in corporations and when you work in companies, they have something called team players where teams come together and they come in agreement to work together on a project or on the, the, the assignment that the corporation or the company gives you. But I'm talking about spiritual unity. I'm talking about coming in agreement with the Holy Spirit. In other words, dying to one's will, dying to one's self, and allowing the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to begin to lead you as God has ordained and purposed your life. I'm talking about coming in unity with the Word of God, standing on God's Word, believing the impossible where the Word of God is concerned. It is important that we realize and understand Unity emphasizes a oneness. It emphasizes strength. It emphasizes power that comes from people coming together in harmony for one purpose. That's unity. That's agreement. Coming together. When we come to the house of God on Sunday mornings or Wednesday or when we come to worship every day on this live stream, we come in unity. What the enemy tries to do is create conflict and confusion. But when we come together, we come seeking the Holy Spirit. We come seeking impartations and activations. That's what unity is all about. We're coming together for the same purpose. When 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 uh, we decide to, to build the body of Christ, unity happens when the saints are all in unity and on one accord and we're all decreeing and declaring the word of God. We're speaking the same message. We're decreeing and declaring the kingdom of God. We're speaking the same message. Unity comes. And because there's unity, you can receive spiritual power. You can receive dominion power, kingdom power, supernatural power, because we're seeking spiritual things, not necessarily physical or monetary things. Now, where there's unity, monetary things manifest. Let me bring balance. Doors open. We receive the blessings and the abundance of God where there's unity. In other words, if, if, if two of you touch and agree, believe in God for a home, and you come to agreement that this is the one we like, this is what we want, and you come in agreement, believe in God for that, guess what God does? He begins to release that to you. Ah, Why? Because you're in agreement. Why? Because you're walking together. You believe in the Father to do the impossible in your life. When you're sick in your body, and two or three of you touch and agree, believe in God for healing because of the unity manifestation of his glory, manifestation of his healing can come forth. That's unity. That's oneness. That's agreement. Believing God, standing on his word, depending on him, trusting him together is what unity is all about. It's about togetherness. Two people coming in unity, three people coming in unity, or thousands of people coming together, believing God for the impossible in your lives. That's the word today. Morning prayer, the power in unity. And that's what we're going to talk about. The authority that comes in unity, that comes in oneness. And I know I teach on unity and agreement, 
but I believe what God is doing for the body of Christ now is supernaturally empowering them. And the more strategies you have in the word, the more power you have. Let me say this, whether we realize it or not, and I'll say this many times and I'm gonna say it again today, it is the word of God, the power of God, it comes through the Holy Spirit, the power of God, it comes through the word of God, the power of God, that comes through the presence of worshiping him, to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, that unity, believing that he is the son of God, that unity in the word, believing that God shifts us, believing that God forgives us for errors and mistakes, that unity, that oneness, brings about a measure of the power of God. That power comes, that's it. It comes through our life of worship. Power comes through our life of, life of praise, coming together, getting in the presence of God, brings his glory, brings his power. I made a comment on a little small one minute video yesterday talking about the glory of God and talking about the church and the glory of God being in the church. And I got a negative comment about what I said and I had to go back and rewrite. When I talk about the church, I'm not talking about a building. I'm talking about the body of Christ with the church. And I was talking about the glory of God coming in the church. And I was talking about God being in the church. And somebody said, God is not in the church. Well, we are the church. And God is in every born again believer. We're the church. It's not that ecclesia that you go to on Sunday. It's not that worship center. It's not that synagogue or that sack of gear that you go to on Sunday, that building that you gather together in on Sunday is not where God resides. He resides in you. You are the church. You are the temple. His glory, the Bible tells us in Isaiah, His glory lives in each and every one of us. We were made for His purpose, for His glory. His glory comes from within us out. And our life of worship draws and brings his glory the more we have that intimacy the more we have that intimate relationship with the holy spirit guess what saints we usher in his glory when we come together in a setting in unity oneness in agreement guess what happens we usher in his glory his glory comes in from within us and because of we worship our worship because of our adoring him because of our honoring your majesty, blessing and exalting him, his glory can really manifest in measures that literally blow your mind. Miracles can begin to break out everywhere because the atmosphere is shifted and the glory begins to hover in the atmosphere. People get up out of wheelchairs. Blinded eyes can be opened. Lame can walk. The deaf can not hear because of the measure of the worship because of the fact that we've worshiped in his presence and his glory comes in and because of the compassion that he has for those that are sick healing begins to happen and break out everywhere even on this live people have told me about miracles that have happened in their lives people cured completely of lupus limbs uh, you know, where they're concerned that they weren't able to use and move. Now they can use and move those limbs freely. See, doubt, fear can be dissipated because of unity, because of the glory of God, because of his presence, because of his anointing. See, the anointing destroys the yoke of the enemy. That comes through the power of unity or the power in unity. Believe in God in spite of what it looks like. And watch this. When you go to a crusade, you're not going to be a spectator. But a lot of times, you're going to receive. So you're coming in unity. In other words, you come in expectation. When you come on this live every single day, Monday through Friday, and then again on Sunday, you're coming to receive. That's what unity is all about. It's about coming to receive what the Father has. That's unity. That's what it's about coming to receive what God has 
for me refresh. In other words, refreshing me today. Because what I had yesterday is gone. At 12.01 a.m. Or a second after 12 a.m. this morning, I entered into a new day. One second after 12, I entered into a brand new day. So the mercies of God are renewed in you and in I today. Starting at 12.01 or 12, one second after 12, we entered into a new day, a new hour, a new fresh start, a new beginning. And we do that every single day. Every 24 hours, we enter into a new day. Not just seven days a week, but every 24 hours, we enter into a new day and a new day of grace and mercy. Seven after seven is the number of beginnings, which is the number eight. Seven is the number of completion. But the number eight is the number of new beginnings. But where there's power, where there's unity, we're always entering into new measures of God. And I need to probably go more in depth than that in another teaching. We won't try to do that today. But I'll go into more in depth than that in another teaching at another time. Amen? But we want to pray this morning. And we want to get in the presence of God. I'm not going to hold you long this morning. I've got an appointment I've got to go to. So we're going to try to end this live this morning right at 8. 8.15, somewhere right around there this morning. The Lord's will try to end it so that I can get to my appointment this morning out of town. Amen. Got to be there at 11, be there at 9.30 this morning. But God is saying to the body of Christ that I want you in unity. I want you in oneness. And I want you in agreement. Father, today we give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you this morning that you are God and that there is none beside you. We thank you this morning that you are our strength. You are our help. We praise you this morning that you renew your grace and mercies upon us every morning. We thank you that we can say or do nothing without you, Father, and we need you in all things. Father, we give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. We esteem you on high. We exalt you because we know without you, we're nothing. Even this morning, as we enter your presence, we adore your majesty. We bless you. We lift you on high. We give you adoration. We give you exaltation. For you are Jehovah El Elyon, most high God. You are Jehovah Raphael, the Lord God that heals. You are Jehovah Shalom, the Lord God, our peace. You are Jehovah Sh Jehovah. Jehovah Shira, the Lord God that provides. You're Jehovah El Roy, the Lord God that sees all. You're Jehovah El Kanai. You're that consuming fire. You're Jehovah Mekadesh, Jehovah Tiskanu, the Lord God our righteousness, the Lord God that sacrifice. And we adore you this morning. We esteem you above Lucifer, above Satan, above the devil, above that old dragon. We exalt you above every spirit that will not give you all glory. Even as we enter your presence this morning, we repent of all sin all iniquity, all ungodliness, everything we've said, done, thought, or imagined, Father, that we keep you from getting the glory. We repent even now and ask your forgiveness. We say, Holy Spirit, thou art welcome ah, in our midst even now. We praise you now for the anointing that shifts the atmosphere, the anointing that breaks the yokes and the strongholds, on sons and daughters, on those on this live and those who will see it in the future. We thank you that the anointing destroys the yokes of the enemy right now. We pray for those that are lost, those that don't know you in the free part of their sin. We pray for their salvation right now. According to Romans 10, verses 9 and 10, God, we decree and declare salvation to the lost. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shall be saved. With the mouth confession is made, and with the heart man believeth unto salvation. We decree salvation now. Father, you said decree and declare a thing, and it shall be established. Now we say, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed would be thy name. Ah. Mm. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. We stand on your word, God. We decree and declare your word, God. We pray for sons and daughters on this live and those who will see it in the future. We pray for the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, pastor, and teacher. We pray right now for the fivefold ministry. We pray for those, Father God, born again believers all around the world. We pray for every nation, every nationality on this live and those that will see it in the future. We pray for all 193 nations. We pray your grace, your mercy, even as shaking is going about across the land, we give you all the glory. Ah. We give you all the honor. Father, we give you all the praise. We thank you that your mercies are renewed every single morning. And we thank you for grace and mercy. Cover our families in the blood of Jesus. Watch and protect us from hurt, harm, and danger. Go before us today, Holy Spirit. Make the crooked places straight. Father, you said in the word, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Go before us and make the crooked places straight. Now, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. That one that's tired, that one that's weary, that one that's worn out, strengthen them now. That one that's on the verge of giving up, give them new hope now. Give them a new desire. Build their hearts and their spirits now. That one that's in that abusive relationship, buying the demonic attacks coming against them now. That one that's being manipulated, intimidated, and dominated. Break the stronghold of witchcraft. Break the stronghold of manipulation and control over them now. Break the Jezebel spirit now in the mighty name of Jesus. That one that's being dominated. Bind the witches and the warlocks coming against them now. Bind black magic, voodoo, and hoodoo. Bind it now. Every spirit that's unlike they bind it in the mighty name of Jesus. But release your power your authority, your glory right now, Father. We bless you for it, huh? We praise you for it now in the mighty name of Jesus. Break strongholds, break generational curses off of the lives of your sons and daughters. Release them from the strongholds of the enemy. For the anointing destroys the yoke. That one dealing with alcoholism, that one dealing with drug addiction, set them free. That one depressed, the one that oppressed, the one that's dealing with anxiety. Break depression now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Set the captive free, spirit, soul, mind, and body. That one that's incarcerated in their spirit, in their mind. The one that's in the prison cell. Set them free for you came to set the captive free. Spirit, soul, mind, and body. We decree and declare your word. For the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me. According to Isaiah 61. According to Luke chapter 4 verse 18. We decree and declare deliverance now among the brethren in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise right now. All the glory, all the honor, all of the praises are yours. But you are worthy. According to Luke 4 and verse 18, we stand on the word that the Spirit of God is upon you. And you've come to set the captive free. To set at liberty them that are bound. We decree your word. Ah, woo. According to Isaiah 61. We stand on your word today. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All glory. All honor. All praises. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. That's your word. We stand on your word. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. We stand on your word according to to Proverbs, to Psalms 23. We stand on your word. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall stand. We stand on your word, Father, and we give you glory in advance. We pray now that you shift us. Bring us in unity. Put us on one accord now. We pray for this nation. We pray for Israel. We pray for nations all around the world right now. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in life. Let that preordained, predestined will come forth now. For faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Reposition us, realign us. That's it. Shift us, God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Let your glory hover. Receive that. Ah. Let your glory hover. Bind Satan. We reject him now. 
bind Lucifer, we reject him now. Bind the devil, we reject him now. Bind that old serpent, that scorpion, that snake, seed, root, and fruit, we reject him now. Bind the Antichrist spirit, we reject it now. Every spirit that will not bow down and give you all glory, we bind it now. We reject it now. We reject sin and iniquity, ungodliness, and unholiness. And we shift and become submissive to your voice now, Father. We thank you that there is power in unity in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Somebody just decree power in unity. Declare power in unity. Ah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I sense the Lord just releasing this measure of the anointed. Just receive it as he's pouring his measures. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ah. Greater measures as God is releasing it. Just receive it there. As he's pouring his spirit now, just receive it there. Ooh. I don't know if you're feeling the anointing like I'm feeling it, but just receive that anointing that the Father's releasing right now. Ah. His fire, his glory. Ah. Just receive it now. Ah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. As God is pouring out his spirit, just receive it. There it is. Fresh anointing be upon you. Ah. Uh, fresh oil be upon you. Fresh fire be upon you now in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I see the fire of God on someone's neck. I can see the fire of God. God is healing your neck right at the right at the joint. I see the fire of God and the Spirit on your neck. Ah, thank you, Holy Ghost. Ah. I see the Father burning. Someone you have sickness in your body. Me, there you are. Someone you've got sickness in your body. This is a tumor. I see the fire of the Holy Spirit burning it right now. Ah. Ah, Rabbi Shanda. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The fire of the Holy Spirit is burning that tumor. Me, there you are. The fire of the Holy Ghost is burning that tumor right now. You feel the fire of God. Ah. He's pouring it. That's it. He's pouring that fire upon you now. Just begin to thank him for divine intervention. Begin to thank him for healing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I have lupus. We decree and declare that God begins to clean the blood. For he cleanses us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. His blood cleanses all sickness and all disease. Cleanse her now, Father, in Jesus' name. That's it. In Jesus' name. That's it. Begin to thank God for your miracle. For there's a miracle anointing being released. Ah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Begin to give God glory for that miracle happening in your life right now. Ovaries. Right now, we decree that sis goes in the mighty name of Jesus. That's it. Prostate healing. That's it. Healing right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Decree and declare that miracle. If you've got cancer, begin to thank God. You may feel a burning in your body. You may have a sense of burning that Holy Spirit is burning some of you. Arthritis goes in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, relieve them of that pain. That pain goes now. We pray for our daughter that called me with pain last night. We pray for healing in her body right now. Diabetes go in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Begin to thank God. Ask God to break the curses. Fire, fire uh, from Mimosha's allergy. I can't pronounce that word, but I know what you're saying. We decree and declare healing. Depression goes now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I said, come in unity as we worship, as we adore, because the power is in unity. Kidney, uh, knee pain goes in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Throat pain goes right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank God for healing you in the throat. Talked to someone yesterday that couldn't speak real good. We thank God for healing you now, releasing your voice now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. All of the glory. Ah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Receive that anointing. Ah. Ah, Tabar Roshanda. All of the glory belongs to you, Father. All of the honor belongs to you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I see this. There's an anointing. Begin to praise God. There's a debt cancellation anointing being released. If you believe in God for debt, for breakthrough in the area of your debt, begin to give God glory, honor, and praise. There's a debt cancellation anointing being released. I sense it in the Spirit. Ah, you see it. There it is. Ah, thank you, Holy Ghost. If you believe in God for debt cancellation, He's releasing that anointing for debt cancellation now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just receive it. Debts, old debts. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Be broken off of your life now. Strategic strategies. We thank God for strategic strategies to come out of debt now in the mighty name of Jesus. When the Lord releases anointing, he gives you strategies. He allows you to make contact with the right people. Debt forgiveness. 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. We just decree and declare debt forgiveness over you now. Some of you create a debt, begin to repent. If you've created unnecessary debt, ask God to forgive you because he's releasing that anointing for cancellation of old debt. Forgiveness of debt. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ah. So if you've been holding someone, if you've been holding someone that owe you, release them so that you can be released. Let me say that again. If you've been holding someone that owe you, release them so that you can be released. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's it. Repent. Father, we repent unto you now. We ask your forgiveness now. Holy, holy, holy. Ah, is that anointed? Oh, God, I'm shut out. Just receive it as God is releasing. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All the glory belongs to the Father. All the honor belongs to the Father. All the praises belongs to God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Fresh anointing. Fresh oil. Fresh fire. Bless you now. Adore you now. I strive unto you now. All of the glory. All of the honor. All of the praises belongs to you, Father. Somebody tell God hallelujah. Somebody tell God glory. We bless your name. We adore your name. Father, we honor your name. You're getting the glory even now. You're getting the honor even now. You're getting the praises even now. Power in unity. Power in unity. I'm sensing in the spirit another miracle. Someone you've been having problems walking. The Lord is healing you now. Ah, woo. thank you, Holy Ghost. I see you actually walking now. Ah, you have you've been having problems walking, but there's a miracle anointing right now. My, uh, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, you've been having problems walking, but the yes, me. The Lord is healing you right now. Yes, me. The Lord is healing you right now. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All the glory belongs to me too. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Begin to step out. Begin to begin to trust God as you begin to take that step. It's me. It's, it's me. God is healing you. If that's you. If God is healing you right now, thank you, Holy Spirit. You've been having problems walking, but God is healing you now. Ah, thank you, Holy Spirit. Miracle anointing. That's it. Yes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God gets the glory. Woo! My husband. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's me. Thank you, Holy Ghost. God is healing you now. Receive that fire. Oh, for miracles. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Someone you're on this live, you've been having problems in the female area. The Lord is healing you now. That burning you're feeling. Oh, Karabashanda. Woo! That burning you're feeling right now. God is healing you now. You've been having female problems. That's me. The Lord is healing you now. Thank you. We give you glory for that miracle. Be made whole. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Begin to give God glory for healing you. There's a healing anointing. Ah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Someone has been having problems in your lower back, real bad back pain. The Lord is healing you right now in your back, your lower back. I see the fire of God on your back. Ah. The doctor's trying to say one thing, but God says, no, I'm healing you now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Someone is on the verge of having back surgery. Thank you, Holy Ghost. God is healing you now. He's healing you right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He's healing you right now. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm looking at someone you've been bent over. You can't stand up straight. Oh, the Lord is healing you right now. You've been having problems standing up straight. The Lord is healing you right now. Back pain, body pain. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You've been having problems. You've been bent over. You can't stand up. We break that spirit off of you now. It goes in the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, it goes right now, my husband. Right now, it goes in the mighty name of Jesus. We break that spirit. That attack on his body goes now in the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, Thank you, Holy Ghost. Somebody tell God hallelujah this morning. Somebody tell him glory this morning. All the glory. Ah, thank you, Holy Spirit. That migraine headache goes now in the mighty name of Jesus. You've been having migraines. Lucia said, and you have no power. Let them go. That migraine is so bad as affecting your vision. Thank you, Holy Ghost. It goes now in the mighty name of Jesus. You, it's been affecting your vision. It goes now in the mighty name of Jesus. Healing in Jesus' name. Somebody tell God, hallelujah, me. Thank you, Holy Ghost. 
Migraine goes now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All the glory, all the honor, all the praises. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Somebody give God the glory. Somebody give him the honor. Granddaughter, we pray for it now in Jesus' name. Healing, healing, signs, wonders, miracles happens now. All the glory, all the glory, all the honor, all the praises. Go to the Father. Somebody just begin to tell God hallelujah. Type it out. Just begin to tell God hallelujah. Begin to thank him for the praises. Ah, Jehovah Raphael, that's it. The Lord God that heals thee. Thank you. Begin to tell him hallelujah. Begin to thank him for the miracles. Begin to thank him for the signs, wonders, and miracles. Begin to give him glory for healing you now. The crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Holy Spirit. Father, we give you glory. Thank you for miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. We give you praise for every miracle taking place now on these lives and those in the future. We give you glory right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just begin to tell God hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Ah, we bless you now. We adore you now. Hear it again, and I'm going to say it again. God is healing some of you in the area of finances. Some of you, I see miracles happening where new doors are concerned. The Lord is opening new doors for you. The enemy said no, but the Lord is opening doors. God is giving you favor. Thank him for favor, divine favor. Go through the door the Lord is opening. Thank you, Holy Ghost. All glory, honor, and praise belongs to the Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Power in unity. There's power in unity. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Turn to Genesis chapter 11, verse number 1. Genesis chapter 11, verse number 1. I want to tell you a story about a people who came in unity. Look at Genesis. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech, the whole earth. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found the plain in the land of Sinar, of Sinar. And they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick and stone and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Look at the next verse, number five. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And they began to do, and now nothing will res be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Now look, look at the next verse, number seven. Go to, let us go down, and there confine their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build a city. Look at verse number nine, the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did they confound the language of all the earth, and from there it did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of the earth. We see in this particular passage of scripture, a people came together. They came in unity. They came on one accord. And because they came together, because they came in unity and on one accord, and they all spoke the same language. Now, now, now watch this. Just because you speak the same language don't mean necessarily that you're on one accord. But they were they all spoke the same language. They were all on one accord, and they decided that they were going to build a city and they were going to build this tower. And this tower that they were going to build, 
was going to go all the way to heaven. And God came down to see what they were doing. And as he saw, he said, wait a minute. This power, this unity that they have, with this they can imagine that they can do anything. So he said, wait a minute. We can't have them building a tower or skyscraper that goes all the way to heaven. So he confound them. He changed their language. Then he scattered them abroad. So as you can see here in this scripture, there is power when you come in unity. Because now watch this. Unity does not persist just of saying it with your mouth. We can say a lot of things with our mouth, but that don't mean that we're in unity. Watch this. Power comes, spiritual domain, supernatural power comes where unity is concerned because we're in agreement in the spirit of who we are. See, when you touch and agree with someone in spirit, manifestation can happen because you're in unity in spirit. It can come into manifestation. But now watch this. But just because you open your mouth and say, I agree, if your heart is not in it, there is no unity. See, if your heart is, if your mouth can say one thing, but if your heart is not there, there's not unity in spirit. Therefore, there is no manifestation. So these people were in unity in language. They were in unity in spirit. They were in unity in truth. What they agreed could manifest because they came in unity. See, the Bible says, they that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. See, unity comes as a result of a spiritual connection. When you touch and agree in spirit, believing something, because of the oneness in spirit, manifestation can happen. This is the reason the Bible says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst. But it says two or three of you touching and agreeing in my name. There am I in the midst. Now watch this. But when two or three touch and agree in spirit and in truth, manifestation happens. Strongholds are broken. See, you've heard me say this before. It can be one million people against God's will. But if two people agree, two people agree versus the one million that's against, if it is the will of God, all it takes is two to agree. We hear this, we know about this, when the spies were sent to see if they could take the land. Twelve of them went, but two came back out of the twelve and said, we can take the city, we can take the land. See, out of all that was sent, when Moses sent them out, two came back and said, we can do this. See, the power is in unity. The power is in agreement. This is where the enemy has manipulated, dominated, and intimidated the church. Because the saints will be in agreement, then the leader's not in agreement. Or the leader will be in agreement, then some of the saints are not in agreement. See, but when unity comes, I'll give you a good example. Church service Sunday morning. Two people come, believing the power of God is going to hit the house. But a hundred are sitting there wondering what's going on. Because the two that believe the power of God can come and hit the house, the power of God can come in and hit the house, then the other hundred will wonder what happened. But the two that believed, and because it's the will of God, manifestation can happen. Remember this, saints. It does not take 50 people to see the will of God manifest in your life. All it takes is two to believe. And the two that believe because it's the will of God, manifestation can come. Because they're not believing in their physical, they're believing in their heart. See, the power of agreement is in the heart. The power of unity is in the heart, not in the flesh, not in I think. I think we can. No, 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 no. You're convinced in your spirit without beyond doubt that God can. 
and that God will. And because you convince in your spirit that God can and that God will, manifestation can come. When you believe in God for a home, or you believe in God for promotion, or you believe in God for financial breakthrough, what moves God is your believing Him. You're touching and agreeing with someone else that believe that God can give you the breakthrough. See, when you call and you touch and agree, there's power in that. If I pick up my phone and call you and say, I want you to touch and agree with me on this matter right here, and you touch and agree with me, not with your mouth, but with your spirit. And I begin to sense in the spirit. Now, see, when you touch and agree in your spirit, guess what happens? You begin to feel it already done. Because the Bible says that when you come to God, ask and believe, believe that you've already received it. So that means in my heart, I already got it. In my spirit, I've already received it. I'm not worried about whether it's going to manifest. See, that's where unity comes in. That's where oneness comes in. That's where agreement comes in. Because I believe in my heart and in my spirit that God is going to do what he said he's going to do. Look at verse number one in Genesis. These people, the Bible says, the whole earth had one language. The whole earth had one language and one speech. They all talk the same way. And it says, like in America, everybody speaks English except for foreigners. See? Now, foreigners speak a different language, but they're from a different native, a native of another country. But those that are of the country that are born in America, we all speak language, English. Now, watch this. Verse number two says, And it came to pass that they sojourned to the east, that they found a plain. They were in the valley, in the plain land of Sinar. And it says, And they dwelt there. They lived there. They lived in this place. They dwelt there. And they said one to another, They came in unity. They came in agreement. They spoke one to another. Go to let us make brick and burn them. They had a plan. They had a strategy. They knew what it was going to take to build the tower. When God gives you a vision, he gives you provision for the vision. They had a vision, but they still needed the stuff to make it manifest. They came in agreement that they would use brick and that they would use slime to hold the mortar together. Slime and mortar. They used slime and they had the slime they had for mortar. And they were able to start the building. See? When God gives you an assignment, whether your ministry, whatever your ministry is that God has called you to, you may think in yourself, I can't get it done. You may feel in yourself it's impossible. I'm talking to somebody right now. But if the Lord gave you the vision, he'll give you the provision. If God give you a vision, he is more than capable of providing everything you need to get it done. All you've got to do is trust him. All you've got to do is find that, that prayer partner that has relationship. That when they pray, you feel the presence of God. When they pray, you feel the anointing. Find that prayer partner. Stand in agreement with that prayer partner. For the will of God. Now watch this. When you come in agreement, because it is God's will, manifestation can come forward. Let me say that again. Because sometimes we pray for things that's not God's will. Therefore, we don't see manifestation. So let me bring balance. Praying for the will of God comes when we believe, but it must be his will. Now watch this. Also, it comes in seasons. See, the will of God in your life comes in his divine timing. If you ever notice all of a sudden, you get a desire in your spirit, all of a sudden in your heart about a certain thing. It could be to move. All of a sudden you just have this shift in your spirit. What happens is God shifts your spirit. He imparts in you the next move, his next plan. 
all of a sudden that thing begins to burn in your heart. It begins to burn in your spirit. And you can't shake it no matter what you do. You, you can't seem to shake that thing. You can't seem to shake it because it's burning within you. And when you begin to lock in on what God is doing, as you lock in on it and you begin to pray, I'm sensing this in the spirit. I need to pray about it. I need to seek God about it. Then you pick up your phone and you call a brother or sister in Christ. And you say, I've got this thing in my spirit, in my heart. I need you to touch and agree with me to see if this is the will of God. And they come in, come in prayer with you. They come in agreement with you. And y'all shift and y'all begin to pray in y'all prayer language. And y'all shift the atmosphere. And then you begin to feel the presence of God. You begin to feel the anointing of God. There's a shifting and there's a shaking in the atmosphere. Why? Because you're coming in a unit. You're praying from your spirit, from your heart, not with your mind, not with your mind. But you come in unity in spirit. And all of a sudden, there's a shift and there's a shaking. And manifestation begins to happen of that thing that's in your heart simply because God put it there. Simply because it's his divine timing. Simply because it's his will to manifest in your life at that given moment. See, God gives it. See, he shifts us. He places it in us. See, this is how we learn purpose. This is how we begin to know purpose. We shift in the spirit. We begin to draw nigh unto God. And as we draw nigh unto God, he begins to change us. He gives us a new desire. What is that? What he's ordained. He gives us a new hope. What is that? What he's ordained. So all of a sudden, that thing you was once focused on, you're no longer focused on that. You know how your kid come to you when they're young? And they say, I want to be a fireman when I grow up. You'd be like, Lord. But then later, as they get a little bit older, they become, they want to be a doctor. Then as they get a little bit older, they want to be an engineer. What's happening? They're changing as they mature more and more and more. Well, but the Holy Spirit changes you. See, the Holy Spirit changes your heart. And as he shifts you, that's it, shifting. And as he shifts you, he puts in you God's will not your will. See, he puts in you God's will. So now when you pray that, because it's the will of God, it can manifest. Now when you come in unity for that, because it's the will of the Father, it can manifest in your life. This is what the enemy don't want you to know, is that the will of the Father can manifest in your life simply because it's God's will. It's God's plan. See, many of the plans in the mind of man, you hear me say this all the time, but it is the will of God that prevails. This is the reason you begin to pray, Father, not my will, your will be done. For that woman you want, for that man you want, for that job you want, for that increase you want, for that promotion you want. Father, not your will, not my will, but your, not, Father, not my will, but your will be done. You pray God's will with a sincere heart Meaning, however you move, I accept it. Now, don't pray your will, God, and then God move and you reject that because you're not praying from your spirit. You're not praying from your heart. So you won't have gratitude when it manifests if it's not what you want, see? Because God's will may not be favoring you at that time. That doesn't mean that he's not going to eventually favor you, but that might not be your season. See, have you ever felt like you were up for a promotion and someone outside of the company comes and they give the promotion to them instead of you and you've been faithful to the company for years? You feel left out. You feel uh, uh, cheated. You feel like opportunity has been stolen and robbed from you. But now, wait a minute, hold on. See, you don't know everything that comes with that position. You don't know the stress. You don't know uh, uh, the pressure that comes with that position. And see, sometimes God protect us by simply saying no. He watch over us by simply saying no. See? And, and you feel like God done you wrong. You feel like God didn't do you right because you didn't get because the door didn't open. No, 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 no. No. That might not be your stress to carry so the Lord protects you by not allowing you to go through that door. Well, you say, well, I, I was hoping and praying that this was the door. No, 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 no. No, see, what you see outside looking in is not what it appears when you actually get in. Have you ever gone to work for a company, got in the company, and found out everything they said was nothing like what was really going on? You say, like, Lord, I hate I took this job. But you prayed about it, and the Lord said no. Don't go through that door. 
That's not it. But you disobeyed God and took it anyway. Now you're praying for God to help you get through it because you brought unnecessary stress upon yourself. See, you've 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 you've, 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 you've disobeyed. It's kind of like you you're in love with someone, and you haven't learned everything about them. You don't know they're bipolar. You don't know they're schizophrenia. Because they haven't been through a situation that bring that out yet. But you say, I love this person and I'm going to choose to live with them the rest of my life. And you pray about it and the Holy Spirit is saying, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. No, no, no. That's not the one. Don't do it. Don't do it. And guess what? You do it anyway. Down the road, something happens. And that bipolar measure shows up. That schizophrenia, different personality measure shows up. And you're like, Lord, what have I done? God said, you disobeyed. Now you've got to live through your disobedience. See, this is the reason God has us come in unity. So that his will can manifest, but not only manifest, but we embrace it because the manifestation of God's will is one thing. Embracing it is something totally different. Accepting what may be or may not be God's will for our lives. That's why unity is so important because you pray and you say, well, it didn't manifest. And that prayer partner that you pray will say, well, we pray God's will. See, notice every day I go off this live, at the end of this live, I'll say, see you at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning to the Lord's will. See? See, some of us say, okay, well, it's God's will, but now watch this. It may be God's will for me to be here tomorrow, but not his will for you. It may be his will for you to be here tomorrow, but not his will for me. See? That's why we pray his will. Because something may happen. Your phone service may go down. Your internet service may go down. An emergency may come up in your family. Something can happen that shift your whole day. You may oversleep. Anything could happen. That is not the will of the Lord for you to be here. And I'm not talking about dying and that kind of stuff. I don't want to be that negative. But I'm just speaking in general. See? Although many of the plans in the mind of man, it is the will of God that prevails. See? God's will prevails. And because we position ourselves, it can manifest in our lives. Watch this. Look at, look at verse number four in Genesis chapter 11. And they said, go to, let us build us a city, a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. They came in unity. They believed the impossible. Then he said, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole world. Now notice what they said. We got to hurry up and get this done and make us a name before we're scattered. But watch this. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built. See, they spoke destiny. They said, we got to get this done or we're going to be scattered. See? See, saints, whether you realize it or not, there is power in your words. There's power in what you say. Whether you ever believe it or not, there's power in it. So just because you speak out of your mouth don't necessarily mean there's not authority in what you release. See? The power's in spoken words. See? The power's in agreement. Authority. Watch this. It says, and the Lord said, behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they began to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. In other words, because they're in unity, because they're one in spirit, they can accomplish what they set their mind to. See, the Lord can give you the biggest task you could ever imagine. And the first thing you say is, Lord, how in the world I'm going to get this done? Well, if I gave you the task in your spirit, 
surely I'm going to give you the strategy to get it done. If you ever believe God for a house, you got the prophetic word, the Lord is going to bless you. The Lord is going to open the door and he's going to give it to you. You got the word. And then you stand there and you say, how? My credit's bad. I don't have a job that pay enough income. How? What happens? You focus on all the negatives. And not once do you trust the word of God. That's a no-no. If the Lord spoke it through the prophet or the prophetess, he's quite capable of meeting you right where you are. Never forget that. Let me say that again. If God spoke it, he's quite capable of meeting you right where you are. All you got to do is believe. All you got to do when you're down is say, Father, I repent. Help my unbelief. I can't see how you're going to do this, Lord, but I take you at your word. I receive it in my spirit before it manifests. And now I'm seeking you to lead me to it. But see, you got the word now. Now you got to go through the process of manifestation of the word of God. That's the hard part. You got the word. Now you got to see it manifest in your life. There's nothing more a blessing to me than to release a prophetic word to someone and they're on the other end like, dog, how in the world is that possible? Then you hear from a month later, God has manifested everything he spoke through you in my life. Well, I never doubted God. And I pray you didn't either. I pray you believed God and took him at his word. Because you believe and take God at his word, manifestation can come because if I'm decreeing and you believing, that's two. Now what God will do is he'll give you the witness. Now watch this. This right is the mistake many people make when they think about a witness. So let me help you. If I give you a prophetic word that comes from the throne, and two weeks later you go to somebody else's church and get the same prophetic word, who's the witness? Well, first of all, the Holy Spirit spoke through me and gave you the word. It wasn't me. It's the Holy Spirit. Number two, down the road, you go to another service. The Holy Spirit speaks to someone else and gives you the same word. Who's the witness? The Holy Spirit. He just used a different face. Oh, that was free. See, that was free. See, see, the measure that you walk in is greater than what you see. See, see, that was free. See, it, it's not the person that's the witness. They're the vessel. The witness is the Holy Spirit. Because he spoke to you at this church in North Carolina. Then he speaks to you again at another church in California. See, he's the witness. See, that individual don't know what God spoke to you. But the witness, the Holy Spirit does. So he identifies, yeah, I spoke it. Yeah, I decreed it. And yes, it will manifest. See, it wasn't the person. It's the spirit in operation in the... Uh, I hope you caught what I just said. It, see, it's the, see, it's the same spirit that met you in North Carolina that's there in Charlotte or that's there in California. The same Holy Ghost. He's the witness because you ain't never seen this person before. You ain't ever met him before. But the witness, the Holy Spirit operating through them, the same spirit that's in you is in them, identifies what I spoke to you in them. So it's not the person, but it's the Holy Ghost. <laughs> so out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, two or three different faces operating in the same spirit, Operating with the same spirit up, oh, let every word of God be what? Established. See, see, it is the Holy Spirit that speaks the same thing. See, you identify with the presence of the Holy Ghost, not the person. You don't know them. But you do know his presence. You do know the Holy Ghost because you worship him. You have intimate relationship with him. So he can speak, you, you, you identify his presence. 
see so you can speak he can speak to your heart because he's our eal he's real so where you're lacking in understanding he's our eal he's real so he shows up he comes and when he comes and when he shows up there's a shifting in you you say my god then you say I got that. You go to that person. You say, "I got the same word though." They're like, "Okay," but it, but but it wasn't me. It's the Holy Spirit speaking through me. The same thing to you. All you got to do is act on it. And believe. See. See, confirmation comes because you received it the first time, but confirmation also comes because you didn't receive it. So God reminds you again. I haven't forgot what I spoke to you. Have you ever been standing in your kitchen or in your living room or in your bedroom and the Lord speaks something in your spirit? God speaking directly to you and then you go to church and somebody speak exactly the exact same words that God spoke to you in the church. Nobody was there but you and God. But they speak the exact same thing. There is your witness. But it's not the person. It's the Holy Spirit in operation in the person. They become the vessel so that he can use them to speak exactly what God said. See, their mind is out of the way. Their restriction of using of him using them is out of the way. So he can speak clearly to you through them. So now you've got your witness, who is the Holy Spirit. He just used a different face, a different mouth. He might have spoke to you through a man one time and a woman the next time. See, it's not what I said. It's what God said. It's what he said. I'm just a vessel. See, so you believe God, the word of God, not necessarily the person. You receive what God said and you believe God, you take God at his word. And I'll tell you, I'll say, I'll say, now the spirit of the Lord is saying this. This is not apostle. This is God. See, and the Lord says so and so and so. It's not apostle. This is the Spirit of the Lord. The Holy Spirit being used of God speaks through you to release unto you what thus saith the Lord. All you got to do is say, don't go say so and so and so. The Spirit of the Lord said this unto me the other day. I receive it and I believe it. That was free. That's it. You're the vessel. See, I'm the vessel. But the witness, we talked about him the other day, is the Holy Spirit. Because he's everywhere you go. Because you take him with you. Because he's in you. See? Seven says, go to and let us go down and confound the language. See, God says, because of their unity. Because of their oneness. We got to intervene. We can't have them building no tower to heaven. You see the power in unity? You see the power in oneness? You see the power in agreement? That's what the enemy don't want you to know, is that you have power. Satan don't want you to know that you can move in the supernatural of God. See? He wants to stop that. He wants to stop you. See? Because of power, because of authority, because of unity, because of oneness. God's word says in Ephesians 4, verse number 3, these words. Be diligent to preserve the unity of the spirit in the body of peace. I'm, I'm sorry, in the bond of peace. The Bible tells us, be diligent to preserve the unity in the spirit, the Holy Spirit. See, unity is first spirit. That's why when you come together and that's why when you believe God to move. So what is the inbound behind Okay, somebody's not in unity with me. They're focused on what's going on behind my head. That's a logo for the church. It's important, saints, that you realize, you know, all this food I'm releasing, and somebody's focused on what's going on behind my head. Get the word. Catch the word. See, you're missing the very important, you're missing the meat. Whoever that is, you're missing the meat. Your focus is in the wrong place. You should be receiving the word. 
as I was about to say before I was distracted. Be diligent to preserve the unity of the Holy Spirit. Seek Him because in seeking Him, He reveals to you God's purpose, God's plan. The scripture is Ephesians 4, verse number 3. Ephesians 4 and 4 says, There is one body and one spirit, just as you are one, just as you, just also, you also are called in one hope of your calling. One body and one spirit. The body is the body of Christ. The spirit is the Holy Spirit. I said again, the body is the body of Christ. The spirit is the Holy Spirit. See, we're one. John says it this way, John 17, 21. That they may all be one, even as you, the Father are one in me and I in you, and that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you sent me. Jesus speaks. He says we've got to become one. One in the Father, one in the Son, one in the Holy Spirit. Jesus says we're one, and the world needs to believe that you sent me, Jesus, sent me, Father. Let me read that again. That they may all be one, even as you, Father, are in me and I in you. We're one. See, Jesus says, they must be one, even as you, Father, and I am one. You and me, and I in you. Then he says, that they also may be in us. See, we must become one with the Father, one with the Son, one with the Holy Spirit. Now, that's a different teaching for a different time. Because I'm going to tell you something. It's easy to become one with the Holy Spirit. But if you really think about it, when you become one with the Holy Spirit, it's because of your intimate worship. You're drawing nigh unto him. And because you draw nigh, excuse me, and because you draw nigh unto the Holy Spirit, you become one with him. But you become one with the Father and one with the Son because they're all one. But you learn who they are. So you worship the Father as Jehovah El Elyon, Most High God, Majesty. You understand Jesus is the atonement. So you study who he is and you learn about him. You learn about the Father, Jehovah El Elyon, Most High God. You learn about the Son, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. And you learn about the Holy Spirit. And watch this. The greater measure is in all three of them. The more you know about them, the more authority and power can operate through you, through the Holy Spirit. Because all three are one spirit. But the greater power is, uh, is in all three of them. This is the reason the glory can be so much greater. Because you've taken the initiative and the time to learn about each one for yourself. See, some people know about the Lord. They have no relationship with the Holy Spirit. Some people know about Jesus Christ, but they have no relationship with Christ. They don't understand his purpose. They don't understand who he is. See, the more you know about him, the more he can empower you. Listen to what I'm saying. The more you study him, the more you learn about him, the more you believe, the more you believe, the more you receive, the more you receive, the more can be released. Nothing in, nothing out. But if it goes in you, it can come out of you in greater measures. Because you become one with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And because you become one, the power is even greater coming forth through you. When you release the word, it comes forth with power. See? When you pray, when you pray, it comes forth with power. Why? Because you're you're identifying, you're learning who God really is. And you're embracing all of who He is, not bits and pieces. See, you study on the Father, you study on the Son, you study on the Holy Spirit, then you embrace them all. Greater. See. And guess what? The more you study, the more you read the word, the power's in the word, the power's in Jesus Christ who lives inside of you. 
the powers in the kingdom because you have kingdom access for signs, wonders, miracles, and demonstrations. So the more you learn about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the more God empowers you. Oh. The people say you can't have the Holy Ghost. I beg to differ. People say you can't move in Deuteronomy's power. I beg to differ because Deuteronomy's live inside of you. Oh. That was free. I won't charge you for that one. Deuteronomy's live inside of you. He's the Holy Ghost. And after that, the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you shall have power. Imagine him coming upon you. Imagine what happens when you invite him on the inside. He's even greater. See? He's greater in you because you've, you've invited him to live in. So it's no longer about you now. It's about him and God being glorified. Romans 12, verse number four says, For just as we have many members in one body, and all the members do not have the same function. See, although the Father's there, although the Son is there, although the Holy Spirit is there, they don't all have the same function. You have a liver. Its job is to take care of the waste. You have kidneys. Its job is to help you flush out the liquid. See, you have a digestive system. Its job is to break down the food. It's a part of the members in your body. You have eyes. Their job is to help you see. Ears is to help you hear. See? But you are one in one place. You have a tongue. Without that, you can't talk. See? You have a heart that pumps blood through your body. Without that, you can't live. See, each part of the organs in your body play a different role. You have things to move and to grab and to reach and to touch. See? Think about the Father. He's the Godhead. He's the creator and the ruler of the whole world. He's all spirit, omnipotent, omnipresent. He's sovereign. He's everywhere at the same time. You have the Holy Spirit, which is the very breath of God. He's present. He's everywhere. He lives within you. He comes with Deuteronomy's power and Deuteronomy's authority. You have the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that is manifested in the flesh. He's the word manifested. He's begotten. He took on the form of man. That's why he's known as the son of man. The son of David. The son of God. The only begotten son of God. See? Emmanuel. Understanding and knowing who he is. See, that brings in the power and the authority. That's why, that's why I share with you in your journey when you first start accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Read Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. These are the books of the kingdom. See, Jesus came with a new mandate. He came to fulfill the law, not to abolish it. But he also came to give grace and mercy where there was no grace and mercy. He came to be the atonement so that when the Father see our sin, so that when we sin, the Father don't see the sin, but the Father see the blood, Jesus Christ. He became the sacrifice. He became the one that saves us from sin and iniquity. So when we go to the Father and repent, we're forgiven. See? That's what grace and mercy is all about. And so that we accept him. But now, I'm not talking about intentionally going and committing sin. But I'm saying when you ever falter by the wayside, you can go to the Father and repent and ask his forgiveness. That's the price Jesus paid. So understanding that relationship shifts you and brings you into that place of oneness with him. See, you should desire to be one in the Father, one with the Son, and one with the Holy Spirit. One. Although they're different. Thank you very much, Pro uh, Prophetess, for reminding me. So it's important, saints, that you realize and understand where God wants to carry you, where God wants to advance you in unity, in oneness, in agreement. There is power in agreement. Supernatural power. Deuteronomy's power in agreement. Let's pray. Father, today we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. We bless, adore, and strive unto your holy and righteous name. We thank you today for your word. Ah, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. 
where we've error, where we've failed to understand unity and agreement, we ask your forgiveness. We ask you to bring us in unity with the Holy Spirit, to bring us in unity with Jesus Christ, to bring us in unity with you, Heavenly Father. Cause us to walk in the same mind of your word. Cause our hearts to shift and to draw nigh unto you. When we fail to do that, we repent now and ask your forgiveness. Father, today we ask you to take this word and plant it in our hearts, activate it within us, that you would be glorified, that you would be edified, magnified, and exalted. We ask it now in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now we bind Satan and every attack of the enemy that comes against your word now. But Father, activate this word in our hearts. Every crevice, every crack, seed, root, and fruit, seal it even now until the day of redemption. Give us clarity where we lack clarity. In Jesus Christ, Yeshua on the seal's mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Now, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Word of God tells us in Romans 10, verses 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It says, with the heart man leads unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So if that's you, say, Father, I'm a sinner. I confess my sins, my iniquities, my ungodliness, and my unholiness. Say, I repent, and I ask your forgiveness. Excuse me. Say, your word says in Romans 10, verses 9 and 10, that if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. So today, Father, I confess that Jesus Christ is your son. He died and rose for my sin and for the sin of the world. Say today, Father, I accept and I receive your Son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah, as my personal Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. Now, if you just prayed that prayer with me, welcome to the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, open your Bibles and begin to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Read his story. Learn about your new Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's your responsibility to learn about your Lord and your Savior, Jesus Christ. Read the book of Acts. God promises to give us another comforter. That comforter is the Holy Spirit. Ask God to give you the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's yours for the asking, according to Acts chapter 2. It talks about the day of Pentecost and how the Holy Spirit came in as the sound of a rushing mighty wind and rested on them. The Bible says, if you have not the Spirit of Christ, you're none of His. The Word of God says this in Matthew 7 and 7, Luke 11 and 9, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. Ask God to give you the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's yours for the asking. Well, Apostle Space Word, I'll read this. Read it in the NIV of the Bible. Read it in the King James Version. Read it in the New King James Version. Read God's Word in the Amplified Version. Read it in the Eastward Version. Read God's Word in the American Standard Version. Read God's Word in the U version. Download it on your phones. It's your responsibility to learn and to read God's Word for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Don't take anybody else's word for it. Read it for yourself. It's your responsibility to know about your personal Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, today we pray for those that have accepted you as Lord and Savior. And we thank you right now for covering them in the blood. We thank you right now for sealing them in the Holy Spirit. We thank you for aligning them with their purpose and their destiny. We ask you now to bind Satan and every attack of the enemy comes against your will in their lives right now in the name of Yeshua HaMessiah, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, bind Satan. Bind every demonic force in the airway. But release your kingdom to come forth through them now. In Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Welcome to the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now I want to take the time to thank those of you that have been sowing during the live. Those of you that have been giving through our Giftly app. Moderators just put that up. Or our sale of Venmo, which is barrispates at gmail.com. We thank you for every seed that comes in. As you hear the Holy Spirit and you release, we give God the glory, the honor, and the praise for you hearing the voice of God and obeying and sowing in to this ministry. God is getting the glory. Luke 6, 38 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you good measure. Press down, shaking together, running over, shall be given to your bosom. God's word tells us in 2 Chronicles 20, 20, Hear me, O Judah, believe in the Lord thou God, 
so shall you be established. Believe his prophet, so shall you prosper. That's God's word. That's God's promise to you, his sons and daughters. His word decrees and declares unto you and I, according to Malachi 3, 8 through 11. The last part of this says, I'll open the windows of heaven. I'll pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake, and your seed shall not cast for the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts, and you shall be a delight of man. His word tells us in Deuteronomy 8 and verse 18, it says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thou God, for it is he that give you power, which is strategies to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant with the forefathers as it is this day. That's God's word. That's God's promise to you. His word decrees and declares to each and every one of us, according to Deuteronomy 1, I will increase you a thousandfold. That's God's promise to you, his sons and daughters. His word teaches us in 3 John, the love I desire of all things, that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as our soul prospers. I want to release and bless your seed even now. The Father, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, we decree and declare your blessings, your abundance over every son, over every daughter, over every seed that's being released now and that will be released in the future. We pray your abundant blessings. You said in Deuteronomy 1 and verse 11, I will increase you a thousandfold. We stand on your word. You told us in Luke 6, 38, give and it shall be given unto you good measure. Press down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. We stand on your word, Father. You told us in the word, according to Philippians 4, 19, but my God shall supply all of your need by according to in glory by Christ Jesus. Father, we stand on your word and we decree and declare blessings and abundance over every seed So now. According to 2 Chronicles 20, 20, hear me, O Judah. Believe in the Lord thou God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophet, so shall you prosper. We bind Satan and every attack of the enemy coming against your sons and your daughters' seeds right now. Activate. Ah, there it is. Multiply the thousandfold return back into the hands of the giver now. We stand on your word. You said the wealth of the wicked is later for the just. You said in your word, Father that we would be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath the first and not the last. We're standing on your word. We decree and declare, but my God shall supply all of your need, our according to in glory, by Christ Jesus. You said some 60, some 30, some 100. We decree and declare thousandfold returns now, uh, on every seed now, in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Blessings and favor be unto each and every one of you now. In Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMasil's mighty name we pray. Amen. So we thank God for each and every one of you. We decree and declare his blessings over you. We thank you for joining us today on this live. Write me at Barry Spates Ministries, P.O. Box 38, Clemens, North Carolina, 27012. Email me at barryspates at gmail.com. That's barryspates at gmail.com. Also, you can Join us every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. at 721 South Main Street, Lexington, North Carolina, 27292. That's 721 South Main Street, Lexington, North Carolina, 27292. Thank each and every one of you that join us on these major platforms, whether you're on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, BSLN. We appreciate you coming on every platform, and we ask you to join us every morning, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Eastern Time on the various platforms. Thank you so much for joining us today. I do have to get up the live a little early today. So thank you so much for joining us today. We pray that the Word of God has been rich and has blessed you and God is getting the glory, the honor, and the praise. Remember, saints, God will never leave you, nor will He ever forsake you. And to God be all the glory, all the honor, all of the praises, and we are made for His glory. Every knee shall bow, Every tongue shall confess, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, is Lord to the glory of the Father. Remember them. The first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Stay encouraged. Have a blessed and an awesome day. God bless you now. Bye now.